So, in this video, I thought we'd talk about Dragon's Teeth, because it's kind of a hot topic right now, and it's just come out, and there's a lot of things to talk about, so I thought I'd give, like, my initial impressions, so to speak, uh, of the DLC. I've played around six hours of it now. I've messed around a little bit, as you can see in the first clip here with the skid loader. Uh, I've played a lot of the chain link game mode, uh, and I've played on most of the maps. I think I've only played a couple of games on Pearl Market because I don't quite find it as engaging as the other maps. So I'll probably explain that later on in the video. But first of all, my god, the roar. It's absolutely amazing. And sometimes it can be really, really crap as well. As you saw in the intro, I went on a four kill streak and before I cut the clip, I actually got another couple of kills that were just a little bit spaced out. And the machine gun on the front of it is amazing. You can kill people virtually instantly as soon as they walk in front of you. You can run people over with it as well, I think. It, it looks very small, but I'd, I'd hope that you could run somebody over with it. But yeah, it's extremely powerful with the machine gun. Uh, the grenade launcher is not so powerful. If you do get like a, a direct hit to a player, though, you're going to do quite a lot of damage, but it doesn't have a huge amount of splash damage to it, so I didn't really see the point in using it. But... There are about two or three of them placed around most maps and you can pick them up and you can use them until you run out of bullets and it basically then just becomes worthless. And I think it's been balanced really well because it's very difficult to control. The controls are very sensitive but very clunky at the same time. So if you push down on forward, you'll go forward but it, you'll go forward very quickly and then it's difficult to stop and turn another way. So they've deliberately made it difficult for you to use it which I think is a really good thing because the machine gun is so fucking powerful. It can be absolutely devastating if the enemy don't know you're there. Aside from the roar, Dragon's Teeth is basically an infantry DLC and it's not like Aftermath in a sense that there are lots of vehicles entwined and heavy vehicles and helicopters everywhere. You'll be hard pushed to find most games where a helicopter or a tank is dominating the server. It just doesn't happen on these maps. They're very infantry centric. There's a lot of close quarters combat areas and that really play goes down quite well with me. Um, I've always been an infantry player. I don't tend to get in vehicles all that much. And it's really nice to play some maps that are outdoors, not like Metro and, and Operation Locker, where I don't feel like I'm not safe if I was to make a run across the street. Propaganda is a great map and a great example of that. There are some quite wide open spaces, but then at the same time, there are quite a lot of choke points on the map. And I think it's really good that a tank can't get in certain areas and can't use certain parts of the map, which means that you're safe in those areas. And there are only a couple of heavy vehicles per map, so you're never really going to come across them all that often. The chain link game mode is great. I really enjoy it. There's been a little bit of a mixed opinion on the game mode, and I would have to say there's going to need to be some improvements in order to make it a little bit better, but sort of taking it down to its basics, it's a very good game mode. For those of you that don't really know how it works, it's basically a variant of Conquest, where if you take a flag that's next to another one that you own, you create a link, and that starts to bleed enemy tickets. And the more links you have, the more tickets you're going to bleed from the enemy. Once again, to tie into that, it's very infantry centric. There aren't that many vehicles and the only ones you're really going to find are transport vehicles for you to get yourself from point to point. So it's very much a team based game mode and you've always got to be alert for somebody making an epic flank and getting one of the flags right in the middle of your link because that can really take out the whole game for you and you can start to fall behind. My couple of gripes with the game mode though is that they seem to end extremely quickly and that's because if you link all of the links together you start bleeding ticket after ticket after ticket and then the game just ends within a couple of minutes and I think that that's good because obviously as the winning team and the dominating team you want to end the game quickly and you want to get that win but at the same time if the game's only lasting about six or seven minutes with one team that's amazing and one team that don't really know what they're doing it can just make for a little bit of a, a disappointing experience, I think. So maybe they need to look at the way the tickets bleed in order to make it a little bit better of a game mode. We also have access to Capture the Flag, which is making a return uh, with Dragon's Teeth. It was included in the Second Assault DLC, but, but nobody really played it. Um, I got a feeling that it's going to work quite well with these maps, but 
Because it was a bit of a letdown with Second Assault, I don't really think many people are going to bother playing the game mode at all. The maps sort of suit the Capture the Flag game mode quite well because you can move from one side of the map to the other relatively quickly. I think the only exception from that is Sunken Dragon because it's built around the sort of the lake or the water space in the middle. It's a really cool map though with the, the restaurant in the middle when you can flood it with the floodgates full of water. It makes for a really cool gameplay experience. It's probably my favourite map in the whole DLC. One cool thing that I did want to show you, and it was in the title of the video, there's a dino related easter egg that's been found. It's on Sunken Dragon, and for you to activate it, I did this on Conquest Large, so what you need to do is spawn in at the sea flag and turn around and start to go towards the floodgates and make your way up onto sort of the gangway level up the top. If you find your way up there, you'll come into one of the rooms where there's a set of buttons on like a command post. All you have to do is go up to them and hold E down on the keyboard or the interact button on your controller. And that will open the floodgates down below. Once you jump down there, you'll start to notice the floodgates opening and the body of water starts to rise up and up and up and up and up. And uh, once you've done that, you need to swim to the back of the floating restaurant right over in the far corner of the map. And you'll come up against one of these sort of like barges. And before you get there, if you dunk yourself underneath the water, you'll find a dino skull sitting on the bottom of the water. Now, if you can do this while the water's filling up, you can get a really nice close look at it. But if you can't, you can still see it when the water's full up anyway, which is why I was sort of struggling to get down there with the footage that I recorded. I managed to do it in, in the game, and it was really cool to see. It was actually found by a user on Reddit, so I'll leave the Reddit link in the description below for you to see. But anyway, thanks for watching the video, guys. Leave a rating and a comment down below. It's always appreciated. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.